When you go to your first colonoscopy, in some ways we think about it as a birthday present. Typically, we'll start colonoscopy at the age of 50. And this is a present to yourself for turning this age. Um, this is something, a gift that you're actually giving to yourself to keep you healthy. Now, I sort of explain to patients in a way like this. I say, it's like a day at the spa. And then they, of course, look at me like I'm crazy. And I say, it's a day at the spa because when do you actually take time out of your busy schedule that you're going to actually initially do a fast and a cleanse. I mean, people pay hundreds of dollars for cleanses. Well, we're going to give it to you basically for free. Um, but then you do a cleanse and then you come in to a procedure, you get sedation, you feel fantastic during the procedure, you get one of the best sleeps of your life actually, and then you wake up and you're told that perhaps you actually had a polyp taken out. So at this procedure, you had something life-saving. But when you think about what's the experience like, so the day before the procedure, it's not the easiest day of your life, but you'll be able to get through it. Essentially, it's a clear liquid diet, and then in the later afternoon, you start to take a laxative. Now, we always tell patients you could be out and about and even working during the time period that you're doing a clear liquid diet, but once you start taking the laxative, it's probably best to actually be at home or at least in close vicinity of a toilet, of a bathroom, because you're gonna need it. At some point in time, you're gonna need it. So you start to take the bowel prep, and people often ask, is it gonna hurt? Is my belly gonna hurt? Am I gonna have horrific diarrhea? And you actually don't. There's not much discomfort when you come into the hospital or to the ambulatory surgical center. You'll be greeted by nurses. They'll speak to you about the procedure. They'll ask you questions about your medical history, the medications that you take, how well the prep went the night before. You'll change into a gown, and then they'll put an IV into you. We need to use the intravenous to be able to give you medications and fluids during the procedure. Then you'll be brought into a procedure room and you'll have a blood pressure cuff put on. You'll have leads put on to watch your um, heart rate. You'll have a little probe put on your finger to watch your oxygen status. And you'll actually be put tubing into your nose to give you oxygen during the entire procedure. Before the procedure started, you're actually put onto your left side for the procedure. And then uh, through your intravenous, medication is given to make you sleepy. You will be asleep prior to the procedure starting you basically will not remember anything during the procedure. You are breathing, you're able to sometimes even converse with the physician during the procedure, but essentially when you wake up, you will almost not even know the procedures happen. There are many times that patients actually ask me, when are we gonna start? And I say, it's done, it, the whole thing is over. Um, and they, they actually feel quite refreshed. Uh, you'll go to a recovery room after the procedure. This way we could just monitor you for a little bit of time You'll get a little bit of something to drink and something to eat. You'll change back into your clothing. You'll be given instructions as to what you can do or not do the next several days. And you'll go home. And we like patients to actually rest a little bit that day. Not to do any heavy lifting, not to make any major decisions, not to drive a car. And it's very important to get yourself rehydrated again because you lost a lot of fluids during the preparation. But by the next day, you are back to yourself. So if you work, or you take care of five children at home, you'll be able to do all those things typically on the next day after the procedure.